Joining me now in studio, Jared Kushner, former senior advisor to former President Trump and the author of the new book, Breaking History. It's a look at the successes of the Trump White House through his eyes from the inside and his perspective behind the peace deals in the Middle East, the Abraham Accords, criminal justice reform, Operation Warp Speed. Uh, Jared, welcome and congratulations on the book. Thank you very Good much. Good to have it's you with us with today. You. Thanks, for, thanks for coming in. Um, I, I just want to get your reaction to this uh, latest, you know, the, uh, on the affidavit, because because one of the glaring things, you know, we cover this story all the time, and I know you follow it closely as well, but the question is, you know, what is it? So we heard, oh, it might be nuclear documents, then that story sort of died and nobody picked it up, nobody confirmed that that's what it was. Do you know what's, what it is that they're so concerned about in these documents? Yeah, so first of all, I'll say I, I've learned through my time in politics that half measures often don't work, and so I think what the judge do is release all the information. I think that's in the public's interest. This way people can know whether there's a serious allegation or this is more manufactured. Uh, I read a lot of my book about the Russia investigation that we lived through where uh, a lot of this was arbitrated through leaks to the press. So we had a, a situation I write about where during the transition I met with uh, then incoming national security advisor General Flynn with the Russian ambassador to start working on getting their perspective on what was happening with ISIS in Syria and with, uh, with the Iran nuclear deal and all the different problems we had there. And, uh, and then what happens is, is the, there's a leak from the intel community to the Washington Post saying that we requested a, a secure back channel with the Russians. And then the CNN takes it and runs with it, and it becomes hype, you know, craziness for, for, for at least a couple of days with people accusing us of treason and whatnot. So I think that right now uh, you have to be very careful about believing what you read through leaks to the press. And I think that transparency with something this serious where they raid the home of their well, then, leading political opponent absolutely. is a very serious thing. It's a very serious thing. I think that uh, Americans on both sides of the political aisle have some real questions about what they did. Um, there's a, a section in the book where you talk about the Zelensky transcript mm -hmm. and you argued, let's get it out there. Yeah. Let's just put it out there. So are you arguing right now to your former boss and father-in-law, you know, put out what these documents are. Put out what they're about in these in these presidential documents. Tell everybody what's in there. Yeah, well, I, I don't know whether he knows what's in the boxes or not. Again, these were boxes that were in storage. If you know anyone knows Donald Trump, knows he keeps a ton of stuff. They're always in boxes all over the place. And, you know, who knows if they were things that he did intentionally, unintentionally. They, there was reports I've read that the GSA packed the boxes. So, like I said, I, I think that right now what we want to know is what's in the affidavit. I think that's the transparency we should get to. Uh, but I do think President Trump was probably one of the most transparent presidents that we've had in a very long time. I mean, he sat for interviews all the time. He was always asking, answering questions That's from the sure. press. You knew what he thought of at 12 o'clock at night when he would tweet. You knew what he thought at 6 in the morning when he would tweet. And so I, I know he definitely is, is often on the side of transparency. Have you asked him, you know, if he knows what's in there or if he went through them or if he intentionally kept something back when the FBI, when the lawyers said that they had already taken out everything that was classified? Uh, I haven't asked him that, but I, I have been with him since then, and he hasn't uh, seemed too concerned about it. Okay. Um, you know, the, the flip side of this is that his polls are, he's rising in the polls, and his support within the Republican Party is rising. So was this raid politically advantageous to if he becomes a future presidential candidate? Do you think it, it was a good thing? I, I think what the raid did, first of all, it was not a good thing. It was not good for our country. I think it's very important that the FBI and the DOJ uh, do their jobs to try to earn back the public trust. We had a very, very tough period uh, where they spied on the campaign. Again, I write about that in my book. And then uh, all the different uh, special counsels, all the investigations, it really politicized the Justice Department in a way. And, you know, I have a, a long history with this, seeing politicized prosecutors uh, go after my family. That was why I was on the side for criminal justice reform. I actually partnered with a lot of people on the left in order to pass it. And I write in the book about how we were able to get a bipartisan agreement done on criminal justice reform in a very divided time by working through Congress. Uh, but I do think that what, what we need to have now is, is, is a lot more transparency from the Justice Department. And I think they should be trying to work to, to get people to, um, to, to have faith in what they're doing. Yeah. You know, si since you bring it up, and I mentioned this to you, you write movingly about your father's experience and that he was arrested and he ultimately went to jail for two years. Is that a concern in your, in your family that you've married into right now about your father-in-law? Well, first of all, I, 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 I've been watching them try to get him now for six years. You know, again, he had no legal problems. He was respected as a great businessman before he uh, announced he was running for, for president. And then uh, once he started and started getting traction, they started, you know, accusing us of, of colluding with Russia. They started investing in the campaign. Once they, they, they spent two years promising the world that Trump was going to uh, have problems because of that. And it turned out that, you know, we, I, I mean, myself, I did 16 hours of testimony with the House, Congress, special counsel. And it turned out that 
we did exactly what we said. He ran an amazing campaign. He connected with the voters. I write about the Upstart campaign a lot in the book. And then uh, they went and they did the impeachment on the Ukraine, uh, trying to investigate corruption in Ukraine, which also you know, ended up becoming politically advantageous. So what I've seen time and time again is, is I, I find that he drives his enemies so crazy that they end up making mistakes and over pursuing mm -hmm. him. And, and I've just seen that they're, they've been trying to get him in every which way, but it's nothing new. Again, this is probably like maybe like, you know, try six or seven that they've had. But, uh, you know, I detail a lot of the, the first tries in, uh, in the book. And again, it's the same people doing the same thing in the same ways, leaking the, the same salacious things that then later get disproven to the same sources. And it's, it's, it's something that I think is more concerning for our democracy than anything else. So, you know, you talk about um, the book and the decision to write the book, and it's, it really goes through a lot of the major things that I mentioned in the intro that you worked on during the course of the campaign. Is this book also a sign that you and the family are sort of coming back, that you're ready for another run at the presidency? Because both you and your wife, Ivanka, have been, you know, sort of quiet over the past couple of years. Is this like, okay, we're back. We're, we're back on the scene and we're ready to go. No, no, don't, don't read anything into it other than the fact that uh, the, the experience I had in the White House was very, very unique. And again, I think that Donald Trump was an outsider president. He was a businessman. He wasn't a career politician. Uh, I was in the business world, in the private sector. Uh, we both choose, chose to give that up. I followed him uh, into it. And then I think the book shows what it's like to be an outsider in Washington and how, if you're results driven, you can get things done. And so uh, when I left government, I, I really, I didn't do a lot of communicating. I wasn't talking to the press. Uh, I, I just achieved uh, the sixth peace deal in the Middle East, which was pretty historic. Everyone doubted. They were laughing when I was put on the file for three years. I was getting endless you know, criticism from the media and from all the experts saying that I would never achieve anything. And then we got a peace deal done, which was the biggest peace deal in over 40 years in the Middle East, which changed the full trajectory of the world. And then we got the second one, the third one. And several people were encouraging me, saying, you don't want this to be lost to history. I personally, through my time in government, learned so much from books by trying to put myself into the shoes of people before me who dealt with complicated situations. And I really wrote this book so that I can put this out for whoever wants to know what it was like to be living in the Trump administration. There's two major currents that I try to cover. One is the onslaught of all the investigations, which we see with Russia, the impeachment, the media attacks. But the other current, which I think is much less covered, is how President Trump got so many things done, right? Results do matter. Facts do matter. When President Trump was in office, there were no wars. We were getting along with Russia. I write a lot about his interactions with Vladimir Putin. I write about his interactions with President Xi. We made trade deals with China, with Mexico. Uh, the economy was booming. The, the wealth gap in the country was shrinking. Inflation was low. Gas prices were low. And, and these weren't accidents. You know, governance matters. Policy matters. Well, and President that... Trump was able to execute all these things in a great way. And I wanted people to know how that got done in a very hostile environment. The, the one thing, you know, I'm on that list, um, President Biden has spoken positively about the Abraham Accords and uh, that, that he hopes to to build on them. So when you, there's so much has changed, though, in the world since you left office. I mean, there's a war now in Europe, um, the exit from Afghanistan. When you look around, you had an opportunity to meet President Xi. Uh, you went to North Korea. What, what concerns you the most? What do you want to sort of put the, you know, hair on fire moment on and bring people's attention to about what's going on right now in the world? I, I think that President Trump broke the mold and brought people into Washington who never would have gotten into Washington. They brought common sense and his success was not a rebuke of the Democrats. It was a rebuke of the Democrats and the Republicans. It was a rebuke of the career political class. What's happened under President Biden, he's been in Washington for over 50 years, is he's brought back a lot of the, quote, experts who got us into problems with, who allowed China to take advantage of us in the first place, who allowed the Middle East to turn into, into to the mess that it was when we inherited it. And I think what they've done is they're running back now to Iran to make the same deal. They showed weakness with the way that they exited with Afghanistan, which is probably one of the most incompetent things that you know I ever watched. Again, if President Trump was in, in office, there was absolutely no way that would have happened. I saw him speak to the Taliban. We had parameters, and they feared him. And the same thing with Russia. And again, I think that, uh, you know, if you notice, they took uh, Crimea in 2014 under President Obama. Under President Trump, we had no problems with Russia. And I even write in this book about a deal we did with, with Russia and Saudi Arabia, where I detail the discussions between President Trump and Vladimir Putin and President Trump and King Salman in order to get the OPEC plus uh, oil deal done in the midst of COVID, which saved 11 million jobs in, in our energy industry here in America, which again, you know, President Trump had us energy independent. They've now rolled that back by getting rid of the Keystone pipeline, doing all yeah. these, these asinine policy things. And so I think that what you need is you need strength. You need strength in power, foreign policy and you need to have purposefulness 
and understand what America's role in the world. We shouldn't be lecturing everyone. We should be focusing on what our interests are as a country, figuring out how to keep us safe, prevent wars, and make trade deals that will help America's economy prosper. Let me ask you two very quick questions, and if you can give me a quick answer, I'd appreciate it, because we asked viewers what they wanted to ask you, and one of them was, would Jared work in the White House with President Trump if he were to serve another term? So I, I think I go through, first of all, my, my answer is I, I'm really loving my life right now. I get to, I've gotten to know my kids. I, I cook them breakfast every morning. I, I love being in the private sector. I, I really believe that people are supposed to go into Washington and then leave Washington. I, I don't think you should be a career politician. So no, you would not go back. It's not my, my preference. Um, but again, it's, it's also something where if you're called to serve your country, it's, it's a very, very hard thing so maybe. not to do. But, but okay. strong preference not to. All right. And, and just very quickly, um, you said yesterday that the president you know, doesn't need some of the people who were there first in the first round, that he's, he's got a lot of very qualified people with him who I think could help him. Who, do you, who are you referring to there? Who are the people close to him now that you think are very qualified and would be advising him in a second term? So, so I think the best place to look is there's an organization that started after he left called America First Policy Institute. It was co-founded by Brooke Rollins, Larry Kudlow, Linda McMahon, three of the, the total superstars from the administration. I worked uh, quietly to get them together. Now it's about 150 people. And what they've been doing is creating uh, what I would say is the bench for the Republican Party, but the Trump Republican Party, where they take the policies. When we got to Washington, uh, it was a it was a strategy free environment. You know, there was no everyone was saying uh, headlines. You know, let's repeal Obamacare, but they had no plan to replace it. So what they're doing now is they're working on very tactical policies we've, yeah, we've and heard recruiting about the, great the, people. The cabinet in waiting, right? Uh, no, it's, 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 it's just a lot of people who are high competency, low ego, uh, who really uh, believe well, we in the like policies Larry of President uh, Trump. Larry's, Larry's around here a lot. So um, it's great to see you, Jared. We're running out of time. It's so good to have you. Thank and congratulations you. on the book, Breaking History. Very good read, obviously written by Jared himself. And sometimes that doesn't happen. Hi, everyone. I'm Brian Kilmeade. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to click to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page. This is the only way that I know for sure that you're not going to miss any great commentary, any great news bites, any great interviews coming your way on Fox. You can get it all here on YouTube. So subscribe right now.